Welcome, students, to my third installment of my second half of my video lectures on the chemistry of life, an intro to organic chemistry and biological molecules. In my previous lecture, I introduced you to amino acids, proteins, and carbohydrates. In this one, I'm going to teach you about lipids. Are you excited and ready? Let's get started. Now, just so you know, there are five different classes of lipids. Class one are free fatty acids. They're the simplest type of lipid and the most common biological fuel source. Two are triacylglycerols, the type of lipid used to store fatty acids. Three are phospholipids. They are used to make phospholipid cell membranes. Four are glycolipids. These are lipids that have been bonded to or attached to carbohydrates or sugars. We will not talk about these in my class. And five, steroids. These are actually structurally very different from the other four classes of lipids, but are often used as hormone molecules. Now I'm going to introduce each of these in greater detail to you, with the exception of class four, which I will not cover in this class, but will cover in a later class if you go on to take biochemistry from me later on, which is really cool. Anyway, let's begin by introducing you to free fatty acids. So fatty acids, which are also sometimes commonly just called fats, are long carboxylic acids, which means that they have a structure that looks like this where this R chain represents a hydrocarbon chain that will vary in length and structure from one specific fatty acid to another. Now at physiological pH, uh, carboxylic acids are actually deprotonated, which means that they don't have a hydrogen on this oxygen. They actually exist as a negatively charged hydrogen right here. So this is the structure of a free fatty acid at physiological pH in our bodies. Now, even though we use fatty acids as a major energy source, the fatty acid concentration in our bodies has to stay pretty low. Otherwise, the excess acids would continue to lose their protons, and that would make the pH inside our cells go lower and lower and lower. And believe me, our cells cannot tolerate very uh, large changes in pH. Otherwise, they would die. And by extension, we would die. So we can't have free fatty acids floating around in our tissues. As a result, our bodies have to store them in a different form. That's done by storing them in the form of triacylglycerols, like this. We have three fatty acids, and we attach them onto this molecule called glycerol, where this oxygen displaces the OH uh, parts of the molecule glycerol, and we end up forming this. This is the structure of a triacylglycerol. Once again, a triacylglycerol is nothing more than a stored form of three fatty acids per triacylglycerol molecule. Now, when our bodies need the energy that they can obtain from the freed fatty acids, the uh, triacylglycerols are then cleaved to release those fatty acids, which are then carried to our cells and other tissues. So you can see we've got these triacylglycerols, which are the stored form of free fatty acids. We then cleave these three fatty acids apart, unstoring them to yield the three free fatty acids, which then go to our tissues as needed. Now, just for the sake of fun, I'm going to show you a picture taken from the popular or maybe not so popular. I'm not really sure because I don't want watch much TV or have cable at my house. Uh, a reality TV show entitled Storage Wars, which you can apparently watch on a &E, or not. I don't really know. I just stole this picture off of the internet. Now, just so you guys know, parenthetically, here is how soap is made. Soap is made by grabbing triacylglycerols, which are obtained traditionally, or at least in an old-fashioned world, from animal fat, and then uh, reacting them with sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is often obtained from wood ash or lye. It cleaves off all of these groups and releases a free fatty acid, which now has a counter ion of sodium cation. This is the structure of soap. I mention this because it's kind of interesting that this is how soaps were originally made. And when I say originally, it wasn't really that long ago. My mom, who was born in 1937, actually grew up on a farm in which they made their own soap using this technique. Let me now introduce you to lipid class three, phospholipids. Now phospholipids look like the figure shown right here. You'll notice that they look very much like triacylglycerols, except that one of the fatty acid groups has been replaced with this phosphoryl group. Now their hydrocarbon tails, these R groups right here, are very, very hydrophobic, which means they don't like water, because water is polar and they are nonpolar. And remember, like dissolves like, and unlike and unlike don't like. Okay, so the phosphate heads, this group right here, however, are very polar or hydrophilic, which means that they do like water. Now, this dual polarity, having these nonpolar tails and these polar heads, allows phospholipids to form the phospholipid bilayers used in cell membranes. 
When that occurs, the phospholipids point their hydrophilic heads out toward the water or the blood inside our bodies or the cytosol inside cells or wherever they happen to be. And then they point their hydrophobic tails inside like this. You can see then that we've got our phosphate head right here, a stupid hydrocarbon group that's bonded to the phosphate head, and then our hydrophobic tails here. This is a shorthand way of drawing a phospholipid, which kind of looks like a mutated sperm. Anyway, so when you take these phospholipids and throw them into an aqueous environment, they actually all line up pointing their hydrophilic heads outward and their hydrophobic tails inward. When this is done in a spherical fashion, that forms a phospholipid membrane in cells. So this is what a cell's membrane looks like, more or less. I don't really know if it's pink and green, but you sort of get the idea. All right, now on to class five, steroids. Steroids are structurally different from all of the other five classes of lipids because they are polycyclic hydrocarbons. All steroids have the basic structure shown here, which is called the steroid nucleus, with some variation of the substituents or appendages dangling off at different locations. Cholesterol is the most common steroid. It has the structure shown here. You can hopefully see the steroid nucleus right here with these different appendages or substituents dangling off of it. That is my intro to these five classes of lipids. I hope you've had an enjoyable time. Please stay tuned to my next and final installment of this chapter in which I will introduce to you and show you nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. Until then, my glorious students, have an enjoyable rest of your day.